more on the scandals in the royals and the way that the world is led from the court in the English royals uh, palaces okay and that's the money lenders that interlock with them and sire them for generation after generation and Princess Diana gets a really bad deal but it looks to me now as if because we're in the middle of looking at the Greg Hallett number uh, six video uh, sorry sorry number five video and in that video she's alleged to, to have had the two children that are now the claimants to the throne by other European monarchs other than Prince Charles let me tell you the story in part so this is the interview where she's highly stressed the marriage is breaking up or, or has already broken up and she's explaining how that has happened okay and this is the Australian trip. Let me tell you the Australian story once we hear a little bit more. We went to um, Alice Springs to Australia and we went and did a walkabout and I said to my husband, what do I do now? And he said, go over to the other side and speak to them. I said, I can't, just can't. I said, well, you've got to do it. And he went off and did his bit and I went off and did my bit. Patrick finished me off there and then and I suddenly realised I went back to our hotel room I realised the impact that you know I had to sort myself out. We had a six week tour, four weeks in Australia and two weeks in New Zealand. But by the end, when we flew back from New Zealand, I was a different person. So in Greg Hallett's other writings, it's alleged that she met the child of uh, Camilla, yeah, which was sired illegitimately by Prince Charles when Camilla was 18 and Charles was 17. He had another kid, yeah, out of uh, Balmoral, yeah, one of the maids in the household sired a child of his, and that child is now around 45 years old. Uh, that was when Greg Hallett made the interview that we are now in the process of showing you. Okay, <laughs> so the child's name who went to Australia was Simon Day, and he had Aboriginal children by his wife, I forget the name of the wife, but they're jet black children and she's quoted as saying that there are too many children in this marriage. <laughs> and she was alleged to have been assassinated in that car with Dodie and that is the Dodie joke that Greg Hallett shares with us with the, uh, the people that are in the Indiana Jones film and there are so many covers and the Princess Di and Prince Charles that we have introduced you to from Anjou, <laughs> yeah, that is the Countess of Melo, yeah, that's the Melo just near Paris and between Paris and the Maginot Line, yeah, running through Brie and all of the Belgian fields of conflict. They are massive jokes against the people. And you can see the stress in her every statement. Uh, so now let me take you back to where we left off on the Hallett Report number 5 uh, and I'll just play and I'll comment periodically on my attempts to show you how ludicrous world ownership is and how they run the world. Okay, And these have now been converted to all of the new Hallett's output and that's Jim Fetzer who told me the other night li uh, live on air but with no other listeners that the new one is just like the old one and he believes he is the old one when I made the video with Jim Fetzer on Remembrance Sunday last year in 2014 he proclaimed that like me he believed firmly that Greg Hallett had been murdered he'd not seen him in two years <laughs> yeah, that's from the end of 2012 and the beginning of 2013 when this video was made yeah, when Greg Hallett was now trying to get his new claim for the throne he confirmed that the Queen had received his messages and had proclaimed to him that she had abdicated already yeah, the Dutch royals that sire uh, the babies for Diana and the James Hewitt character that sired the other one this is all told in this video with pictures yeah and I don't know why Jim Fetzer and uh, Hallett have left this one and number six up on the internet it's as if they want the truth to be outed 
but they don't have the courage to do it again and again and again because of the number of death threats that they've had or because he actually got talked after this. They tried to poison him yeah, in Portugal when he was meeting the new claimant uh, and I'm just going to let you see the whole sad saga and the fact that Princess Diana was not really so meek if she was intentionally in Prince uh, King Juan Carlos's bedchamber and also intentionally in James Hewitt's knowing full well that if she had those children that they could screw up the whole of the legitimacy of the Windsor bloodline by doing that <laughs> yeah so she's a cleverer dumb blonde than she may come across but no one can know what is the true version of this very very complex story please watch the videos I've made earlier on commoner Kate being a prostitute and coercing her way into the court right so off we go on the stories of Greg Hallett and this is where we left off the last time the murders and uh, this included the payment schedules for Lord Louis Mountbatten on um, the 27th of August 1979 and also the payment schedule for Margaret Thatcher's lover now he was murdered the 30th of March 1979 and the, the, the payment schedule started on the 28th of March 1979. So the payments for these murders were done 10 days before the murders. So that Margaret Thatcher's lover's murder, Gary Neve, his payment schedule was not on that. And just a little side detail, that was done because the judge, Andrew Spate, who was in charge of it, had been compromised by the Security Intelligence Service because on a yacht, uh, moored off Kawawala, he had found his wife having sex with a, a guy on the boat next door, so he shot the man's arm off. So that's how the judge was compromised, and that's how the payment schedules for Erin Eve's murders are missing from the file. But there was the payment schedule for Lord Louis Mountbatten's murder, and Peter Williams, who became Peter Williams QC, who was Prince Philip and Queen Elizabeth's agent in New Zealand, he financed the murder out of the money in the safe. And the payments were made Ten days before the murders, a little little break and get back on topic. So no, it's very difficult not to be on topic, no matter what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, sir. Let's try closing the other tab that's open. So Princess Diana's tab's gone, uh, and this was not doing this in the earlier video I made, but because it's not been reloaded, that could be the problem. So let's, uh, we're 28 minutes in, and it's still in the run mode. Sorry, this is very amateurish, but I want you to hear everything that they have to declare. Yet, the world could not be in a more chaotic place. And what they're doing in the papers every day now is the demonization of all of those false religions that the Pisos dreamt up at the same time. <laughs> Yet, it is absolutely massive, and it is relentless, and the people that were the Charles and Diana in the stories about Anjou and the massive mansions that the Rothschilds have built by the architects f that built the castle in Anjou <laughs> yeah, that is a man called Hippo Hippolyte and that is the joke about the Pisos and he builds the massive mansions in Hertfordshire for the Rothschilds and that is uh, in the Wendover region and uh, I forget the name of the mansion that we talked about in the earlier episode I'm going to have to reload this and take it to 28 minutes for you sorry so what we've got is Peter Williams who has funded, funded the murder of Lord William Batten and we can probably 
normally do an entire show on the payment schedule for the murders and how it went down and who was involved. I think that would be a very good idea. I'm going to take that as read. But, uh, so that is the show that they did, and that is the Hallett Report number 6B. Yeah? All of it's $100,000 to have Mountbatten killed, and all of the personnel and the people and the judiciary that lead that are all named in that video I've already made. Uh, Peter Williams funded the um, assassination of Lord Lloyd Mountbatten from New Zealand, involving Ed Leary and Kevin Ryan, senior the warrior princess. Her uncle, he was a lawyer in New Zealand, uh, living within three miles of Peter Williams, and he was actually the leading fundraiser for the IRA in the Southern Hemisphere. So he actually did the payment to the IRA for the murder. So Peter Williams QC, the leading heroin trafficker in New Zealand, murderer, the number of murders has actually kept the jockey club, and the number of murders he's done is 150. So going back to the change of laws of succession of the throne of England, yeah. As Lord Chancellor to the true royal family. My role is actually to change the rules. Oh, sorry, this is going to be very, very painstaking unless I open it again on another tab. Uh, our claim to the throne and has reacted to it through the laws of succession, we've actually, in that way, she has succeeded to us and acknowledged that we have a superior and justifiable claim to the throne of England. I think that's right. It's such a remarkable event to be the... I don't interpret things that way. When you listen to the videos about the Queen being there, only for a certain period and everybody going home, I think she's declaring that her mighty organisation will be taking the real Greg Hallett down. <laughs> and that is a perfect explanation for his disappearance. Uh, and he was bemused by that too. Yeah, that nearly two years he was out of circulation. All of the news he released was sensational and all of it had them in a panic as I continue to republish it, show all of the pictures and keep telling the stories about the wartime profiteering in particular and it's very embarrassing to be the current monarch in a 60 year reign and to make jokes at the London Olympics about all of that treasonous behaviour. Devising the laws of succession that for them to undertake it under these circumstances is an extraordinary admission of consciousness of guilt. It is, it absolutely is, well put, is it, it is an extraordinary admission of consciousness of guilt, yes. Prime Minister David Cameron had gone around and seen all of the heads of the Commonwealth Government beforehand to arrange their votes. So the first session on 28th of October 2011 was that they all voted for a change of the laws of succession to the throne of England and they thought it was being liberal to allow the royals to marry Catholics and to allow the older daughter to take the throne above the younger son. But really it was about changing the laws of succession to only be the children of Prince Charles, the current Prince of Wales. And that brings us to the point where Prince Charles has four children. Not so in that video, yeah, Princess Diana was discussing how she felt about being the next queen. Yeah, so all of that has been taken down <laughs> and it could well be, as you find out later on, that she is a major factor in making Prince Charles ineligible to be the next king. And when you realise that she met his bastard children, the Aboriginal blacks in Australia and declared there are too many people in this marriage, she took proactive action to get the Windsors totally illegitimate. No one can know which is the truth. Not limit. 
aren't his. None of them are, they're either not his or they're illegitimate. And there are three Prince of Wales. Great. And when you see the pictures of Princess Diana partying with Richard Branson on NECA, you think, wow, <laughs> she looks quite mature then. In the interview with Martin Bashir, she was only in her early 20s, and I don't think she would have, uh, you know, <laughs> mature children then. Yeah, it's um, absolutely amazing. The children were quite small, even at her funeral. <laughs> yeah, and all of it, all of it is a sad, sad saga. How the newsmen and the medias, all of them, cover up the truth, and no one can know what the absolute truth are, apart from the gods in the heavens. Is this a perfect place for us to take our second break? This is Jim Fetzer, your host on Real Deal, with my very special guest today, one of the world's leading buck raiders, Greg Hallett. We're discussing the illegitimacy of the current reign of the Queen of England. We'll be right back. We're discussing the illegitimacy of the reign of the current Queen of England, Elizabeth II. Greg, please do continue. You were talking about the their family and so forth. The children, none of whom were by uh, Prince Philip. Uh, please continue. Yeah. So Prince Philip and Queen Elizabeth's primary heroin traffickers and murderers, Peter Williams QC and Dame Margaret Baisley, are the same two people that are running the working group to organise how the change to the laws of succession to the throne of England will occur in all of the Commonwealth countries. So it is a mafia operation. And the first thing that the New Zealand Working Group on the Change of Laws to Succession of the Throne of England did was backdate any decision made to the 28th of October 2011. So yeah. they've done their best to ignore a claim to the throne, which has been going since the 6th of March 1997, and delivered by letter on the 24th of June 2010 and the 2nd of August 2010 and a lot of subsequent radio interviews and some books. They've, they've ignored that and they've gone and used their heroin trafficking, murdering and mass murdering mafia to chair the group for the change of laws of succession to the throne of England. This is a confirmation that Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip are running the Mafia and are the heads of the Mafia. How broad spread is this Mafia grant? You're talking about an international criminal organization. Yeah, we're talking about Prime Ministers. The Prime Minister of New Zealand during the heroin trafficking, Rob. So this is sensitive. This is the Jamie Bulger murders and the Prime Minister in New Zealand being a heroin addict. Prime Minister Bulger. Do you get it? When we went to New Zealand, we were laughed at for ferrying our children to the schools in the car and signing them in and out. The Kiwis are relaxed people and the Bulger name means Prime Minister to them. Nothing to do with the murder on the rail track in Liverpool. All of those false news scams mean that the whole world lives in fear instead of being relaxed. <laughs> yeah, and in the earlier video I show you the automatic weapons when this man takes his case on the illegitimacy to Westminster and has to go round the back. Every one of the policemen in the palace area are bearing automatic weapons. Yeah, massive machine guns on all of the shoulders in a peace-loving country. Yeah, and all of it is a stitch-up. So, <laughs> we've lost the track again. So that is at 33 minutes. Let's open this one so we can... Muldoon, who's Prime Minister from 75, he was a heroin trafficker and a murderer. And uh, New Zealand's Prime Minister Jim Bolger was a heroin user. I've actually got a photo of him with Prince Charles. So this involves uh, MI5 and MI6, no doubt. Oh, yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, if you actually look at the, the uh, whole diplomatic corps with the power that they're given... Uh, so do you get that? That's the Prime Minister becomes the murder victim and the man that is in that team that was the murderer was a chef in this region and I've done the beating with him yeah an absolute body double with the same Liverpudlian accent power of immunity they're actually running the drug trafficking they're running the human trafficking through criminal organisations like the, the person who does the, the home roast for Queen Elizabeth II in her private garden there's a guy called Nick Winter and he's told me this himself and he claims that his father is a mafia boss worth 50 million pounds so you've got the mafia doing the hog roast for Queen Elizabeth II amongst all the so called dignitaries but you've got to wonder you know, how Sorry, it is, this is the way that they have to run it. It's just an abomination. <laughs> so, what I could do also is to put the pictures up on the website that I've got on the, all the drug running. How close their relationship is, and it seems to be from hand to plate, is how close the mafia is from the monarchy. What they fail to recognise in saying that only the children of the current Prince of Wales, Prince Charles, could inherit the throne, they didn't acknowledge that there's three Prince of Wales. There's Prince Charles, who's actually a fake Prince of Wales. There's Francisco Manuel, who's the true Prince of Wales, and he's even acknowledged by a lot of British ambassadors as the true Prince of Wales. And then there's the Welsh Prince of Wales, and then we have to look at Prince Charles' children. Now, it's well known that Prince Harry is not Prince Charles' son. Prince Harry is James Hewitt's son. And what's not so much acknowledged is that Prince William is not Prince Charles' son either. Prince William is the son of King Juan Carlos of Spain. Watch the pictures. Comes up in a minute. Just be patient. <laughs> We're going to have to be patient. Greg Hallett, report number five. Laws of succession try to subvert the legitimate claim to the throne. Lord Chancellor, Greg Hallett, Jim Fetzer. We're up to about 35 minutes and they will not let it play. So here it is, this is what you find when you look for Hallett Report number 5 and this one you have to click the arrow, none of the others now give you a soundtrack for more than a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, you get the impression that they want, they really want the real truth to be outed. The way that Prince Charles is treated as a child is absolutely vicious. And they both marry incredibly similar looking women. Princess Diana used to go on private cruises with King Juan Carlos and that was how she got pregnant to him. That's fascinating. I mean Harry looks so much like Hewlett that it's really not a stretch at all yeah. and it's very interesting about uh, William. There's, there's Prince Harry there and there's James Hewitt. So you know, there's no denying. Oh that. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 think that most of the public is aware of this. Yeah, and part of the part of the change of laws of succession to the throne of England was to bypass Prince Harry because it's so well known that he's illegitimate. Here's King Juan Carlos here with his wife, Queen Consort Sophia, and here. It's ever so frustrating. So that's 36 minutes. <laughs> uh, and we could try and drag that forward to 36 minutes. Where is that on the slider? <laughs> Can you see the likenesses in the images? Yeah. 
and when they see all of this coming out all of them panic and when Juan Carlos abdicates yet yeah, he's been shooting buffaloes again just to try and cover up the real reason that they're in the news uh, and he has a massive limp and walks with two sticks and that is where I get loads of my messages <laughs> yeah the people that stand in my way in my hometown all of them get that too <laughs> and much worse yeah <laughs> much worse so 36 minutes and it's not going to play again children and when Diana gets to learn that she proclaims in the public eye that there are too many people in this marriage yeah and so if you know all of these secrets and you know <laughs> that you're able to behave like them in the bed chambers it's quite easy to trick your dynasty out of its legitimacy yeah and all of it yeah no one can know whether it's truth or fiction but when you look at their ears and their eyes and their facial expressions and all of the likenesses that you've just seen it seems highly Thanks likely Simon Charles Day so he's illegitimate and that's him there so he looks very who, is the, who, who, who is the woman he has wept not that that's it's a wife, that's his wife I see and they've got five children before marriage um, five children before marriage? Yeah, five, yeah, six children before marriage and one of them died. Um, so they've now got five surviving children before marriage. But you see the similarity between Prince Charles and Simon Charles Day. So yes, yes. Prince Charles has this illegitimate child with Camilla, which they refuse to acknowledge. And he had his, his ears pinned back so they didn't stick out like Charles. He had his teeth ground down so they didn't look like Camilla's and he had brown pigment injected in his eyes so he looked like uh, he didn't have blue eyes, he had brown eyes. Yep. And those are the articles. They're not citing all of them here. Right. Yeah, and you see it was like sandpaper being rubbed across his eyeballs. Of his, uh, eyeballs yeah. his wife, Alvina Durante, is a similar looking woman, similar type woman to uh, Camilla Parker Bowles. Yes, she is. Or so yes, it's not a photograph because of reflection in her eyes and so on. So what you've got is, is 
biological children marrying partners similar to their biological parent. Prince William marrying Commoner Kate, which she's got a very simple look to King Juan Carlos marrying um, um, Queen Consort Sophie. Very similar look, similar cheekbones. So, so do you think there's a genetic predisposition to marry persons of certain looks and so forth? Uh, well, there appears to be, yeah. They, Commoner Kate and Queen Consort so Sophie, they've got a Mm. 40 minutes now yeah it's absolutely <laughs> calamitous but you're getting the gist of it yeah the whole thing and I don't know whether or not the Rothschilds still run it or who runs it yeah but Prince Phil in yesterday's videos is the main culprit and when you see them coming in with that orange in their hand yeah that's the orange joke because Prince Philip came into the marriage with the illegitimate Queen Elizabeth whose father was Winston Churchill in an orange box with a tenor in his pocket <laughs> yeah and all of that is out of Greece and all of the Greek democracy has been defrauded George Papandreou their elite families too they flee to America when the revolution is occurring and the tank commanders are trying to take over Athens uh, and the Papandreou family defrauded the Greek banks and all of the Greek treasury in that massive banking crash yeah and all of that was policed by the German police and that's Miss Merkel's and role in life things. she's a when socialist the <laughs> some of the nose, some of the lips, some of the cheeks, some of the eyebrows it's incredible Prince William and King Juan Carlos have exactly the same ears it's just phenomenal how how close their ears are and ears is one of the ways that you tell who your true parentage is Prince William's ears are absolutely nothing like Prince Charles nothing at all Prince Charles has um, absolute wing nuts you know <laughs> sorry I should not laugh at the monarchs Prince Charles also has a, an illegitimate child with a servant girl in Balmoral Castle Lot of hanging baby. Oh, yeah. So, so they say. Uh, don't, they, don't they believe in birth control? They were forced into changing the laws of succession to try and bypass our legitimate claim to the throne. And in doing so, they said only the children of Prince Charles can succeed to the throne. So if you can buy these books I believe that they are being marketed by the killers of Greg Hallett uh, and the people that are marketing them yet the, it's very difficult to find out now there are several Greg Hallett's on the business registers one of them is in the Stratford-on-Avon constituency of Nadim Zahawi and he lives in a town called the Stepping Stones yeah and uh, I've invited him to come and talk to me on Skype, like the old Greg Hallett used to do. No, no change given there. They will not talk to me. Yeah, and this interview is maybe taking place on different sides of the world because they're in different rooms. And Greg, uh, Prince Charles, the current Prince of Wales. Now, Prince Charles is not the father of Prince William. King Juan Carlos is. Prince Charles is not the father of Prince Harry, James Hewitt is. Prince Charles is the father of Simon Charles Day, who is illegitimate and has five illegitimate children. And he has, I think it's a daughter with the servant girl in Belmont Castle who's illegitimate. That child will now be 44. Do you have photographs of her? No, no. I, I was informed of it by um, British SAS. That was probably about 2010, I think. So, in changing the laws of succession to the throne of England, the British royal family have actually completely done themselves out of a legitimate successor. So they've actually destroyed 
the House of Windsor. Yeah, do you get it? And we'll now get the story, if you don't, we don't have time here, where we see that Princess Diana has affairs with, <laughs> uh, with other people. Yeah, and that is in the massive Goldsmith dynasty and all of the cover-ups of Commoner Kate being the relative of the person who is in the Goldsmith dynasty who runs the brothels. I've had a look at his business registers. He's got dozens and dozens and dozens of businesses registered. <laughs> yeah, but this is much bigger. This is much bigger. It's about the governance of our country and the ownership of it. And it's so there is no legitimate bloodline for the House of Windsor, is there? No. is the House is a Parliament joke in the 39 Steps movie written by John Buchan who's the Tweedsmuir and becomes the Governor General to profiteer in World War II and that is the joke about the Duke, the Duchess of Roxburgh that's Lady uh, Jane uh, Lady Jane Grosvenor who's now married to a man which is the, who has the same surname as the hero in the 39 Steps movie. His name is Ned, uh, I forget what the hero in the 39 Steps movie, Downey, yeah, Donny. okay? So the mythology about saving your country and being a spy and being a counter agent in all of the massive jokes that they have, yeah, that's the 50,000 people in the SOE in World War Two. 50 to 60,000 people in the military police and if you step out of line and you try to do something that will save your country or end the war quickly yet as a loyalist you will be dogged on by those people who are entirely for profit and are led by Oswald Mosley out of the war office yeah, Oswald Mosley see how it rolls on and on and on <laughs> and that means that she and Charles are both illegitimate <laughs> uh, and I don't think her bloodline has any claim to the throne but <laughs> she's wearing the Prince Charles he was, he pattern was, uh, very well suit there and that, that I wore to my uh, wedding and his other legitimate daughter here is Jemima Goldsmith, who became Jemima Khan. She married Imran Khan. And that flashing image of the other daughter is strikingly like the pharmacist who was killed in Israel. I don't think it's going to let us go back to that. But when you watch this video again, drag it back, have a look at her, 
and it's the girl's name is Rachel Curry, and she, another look-alike for that person who will not talk to me on Facebook is on Facebook with me now. <laughs> yeah, and ca this is the one who was married to Imran Khan, and my wife kept score for Sussex County Cricket Club when Imran Khan was the captain. And my wife is an expert in financial services, and I keep trying to get John Patterson to visit Brighton secretaries and directors, two of the biggest laundering frauds in the whole globe. <laughs> but instead John goes and gets into battles with the local police, and none of the really big frauds that we talk about will be released. And now he just make, he gets me to sign up for interviews, and he just si sits silently in the background and republishes the videos, and I presume that they monetize that. Now these three here are all half-sisters. Rachel Curry, look her up. Goldsmith, Jemima Khan, or Jemima Goldsmith, and Lady Diana. You take Diana's mother and James Goldsmith and mix those faces, you've got Princess Diana. Fascinating. And so James Goldsmith even has the same the same sort of flashing eyes, the same hands, the same gestures as Diana, the same mannerisms um, and the same charisma. It's even been written up in the papers. Were Diana and Jemima sisters? Oh really? That's a yeah. the a speculation about Sir Jimmy Goldsmith's romantic life was a popular topic in the British media. For example, in the press there are a number of claims that James Goldsmith was the father of family friend Lady Diana Spencer due to his friendship with Diana's mother and later with Diana. Even if, if William and Harry were legitimate, which they aren't, Diana, the mother, is also illegitimate. So you've got this, this massive amount of ongoing illegitimacy through the royal family. In fact, the royal family has been completely illegitimate from 1840. It puts us in a, in a very interesting position where... Did you see the Christmas turkey joke? Yeah. <laughs> and that's turkey that often precipitates the wars. They've avoided the claim, they've reacted to it with the change of laws of succession, and they've reacted to it in such a way that they've actually done themselves out of a legitimate... And the joke about the turkeys and the zebras and the asses and all of the creatures that they adopt as their beloved creatures is that they have dewlaps, which is the cheeks hanging over the side of their face, like a bulldog. <laughs> yeah, and all of it. And then you've got the, sp the Springer Spaniel jokes. And all of these jokes are sadly about false religion or genocides over world history. Find the throne. From 1840, Queen Victoria married Prince Consort Albert, which was a bigamous marriage, and he was a homosexual who wore Prince Consort Albert, which was a chain belt around his waist and through his foreskin of his penis, so it was always vertical and he couldn't conceive. Look it up on Wikipedia, so it's still the there incredibly. The official nine Prince Albert's Prince chain, look it up on Wikipedia. Vigorously and illegitimately. Tell me about that gadget again. Right. The, the gays call it a Prince Albert. It's named a Prince after, Albert? Yeah, it's named after Prince Consort Albert. It's the purpose is to prevent in, in, uh, in, in intercourse? Yeah. 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 So it's kind of like a male chastity belt. Yeah. Yeah. Prince Consort Albert wore a male chastity belt. So he did not father any of Queen Victoria's children. And, that and, the, reason, and the reason for that was because of Albert's well, he was a homosexual, but Lionel Nathan Rothschild fathered all of Queen Victoria's official nine children. And so to make sure there'd be no mixture of Albert, then you'd have an odd lot, you'd have a child that didn't look at all like the other, so you wanted a continuity of the male contribution to pro pro procreation. Yep. So that was 1840, and then 1850 cameras came in, so the eldest child, Princess Vicky, was then 10. Uh, and before she reached 21, Prince Consort Albert was murdered by a man, medically assisted death. And they said it was... So that's Princess Vicky, yeah, who was eventually married into the people who lived on Mull, and that is 
the dynasty that is Argyle in the Braveheart movie. Okay, all across the west coast of Scotland, all across the Mull, the massive cataracts that are the Falls of Lorne, and all of that uh, that fault line that runs across the valley where the the Antonine Wall is built, and that's the Antonine Nerva dynasty, the breakaway of Christianity. Yeah, Greg does not know any of those facts. Pneumonia. <laughs> But actually what happened was he had a cold, they put him in a bedroom, they left the window open in winter and he refused to let him out of the bed. So he actually got pneumonia and died. So that's <coughs> Prince Albert. That's not okay. Prince Albert being photographed with the children that he didn't look anything like. And the real father, Lionel Nathan Rothschild, was known as the King of Kings. And he was funding the British monarchy, most of the European monarchies, and uh, many of the Asian monarchies. So, so he was the power behind the throne. Absolutely, no question. Absolutely no question about that. It's, you know, it's well recorded. The punch cartoons of the day, calling him King of Kings and everyone else, all the other monarchs. Dead ringer for James Robertson Justice in the Carry On films. Yeah, and there's a body double for him, but a very, very young one in Sainsbury's now. Great big orca fat bloke, but very, very young. That's because puppets for him. So, all of Queen Victoria's official nine children were illegitimate. And the oldest of those was Prince Eddie, and he was an arsonist. <laughs> and he, he set fire to two castles. And he was, uh, he was also the cause of the uh, Jack the Ripper murders. Uh, this is uh, Jim Fetzer, your host on The Real Deal, uh, concluding my conversation with Greg Howitt. He was a muckraker extraordinaire. He's been exposing the illegitimacy of the royal family and about to discuss the true, the true uh, source of the Jack the Ripper murders. Please, Greg, continue. Prince Eddie was the cause of those murders. He married a woman... Uh, well, a Catholic woman in a Protestant church, or a Protestant woman in a Catholic church. But that was the cause of her being lobotomized and the royal family actually faking his death. They actually faked his death. Did, did he have some... So that's a lobotomy, so that the person will not be able to remember or report or recall any of it. That's the use of the psychiatric tool that is being deployed on me by Sandy Morris. Dr. Ian Fingland and all of the Quislings in my local Borders Council, all of which are covering up the massive frauds of all of the funding base. They're in a massive debt pool. I totally understand it. They will not or let me do anything, and they want me lobotomized. Some sort of medical training, Greg? It was, it was actually Queen Victoria's doctor under the orders of. King Edward VII. What accompanied him when he committed these crimes? Tell me more about this. Why were these women killed? They were witnesses to the wedding. Uh, oh, witnesses to the wedding. Now I recollect. Yes, yes. yes. And there was uh, proposals of extorting the royal family, which was then a fake royal family. So and the woman he married was lobotomized and kept in a... So that's 1888, the year the British armies Yet with all of these shenanigans going on about the ownership of the money stream, they're in fucking Khartoum, at the bottom of the Nile, which also means Piso. For isolation. So Queen Victoria was separated from her son for 16 years, just under 16 years. And this is the role played by Peter Sellers in the film Being There, on the Isle of Wight as the gardener. Yeah, she lives on those massive mansions in the Isle of Wight and for a time uh, he was raised in Gosport. Yeah, and uh, then he gets topped in, I think it's Twickenham in London by uh, the British Royals and I think it's Edward VII but we'll see that later on if it starts again. <laughs> yeah. Can you see how it gets jumpy on the sensitive topics? Uh, and we've got 49 minutes of taping already, and we've got 
yeah, we might be able to make it to the end. And if you can still continue to look this up, look it up for yourself and look at my website and find the images of all of these characters. Yeah, so Prince Eddie had three dates in his lifespan because one was the faking of his death and the other was the actual death when he'd been in Glam's castle for 30 years. And they've got another monarch in place knowing full well that the legitimate model monarch is a serial killer and a rapist and he's Jack the Ripper. <laughs> and that's Glam's castle that appears in the Macbeth. Uh, output from Shakespeare in Nadim Zahawi's constituency of Stratford-on-Avon where the other Greg Hallett now lives and will not join me on Skype. <laughs> and Jim tells me that he's met him lots of times. All of these interviews are made across the Atlantic <laughs> yeah, or across the South Pacific. I'm not sure that I've ever seen them in the same studio together. But that may be incorrect. Uh, right then. So, we're at 50 minutes. Let's see if we can drag the slider to 50 minutes on the other one. Every time they get a little bit sensitive. George of Cumbria and Teviot Dale, who was the only legitimate husband that Queen Victoria ever had, all through the marriage to Albert, that was bigamous, and he does not have sex, because he's got the chain yeah, on his willy, and strapped to the rest of his body, and he cannot have sexual congress with anyone, <laughs> and they murder him, and it's the same story for Nero in the Roman court, and he is the one Prince Consort Albert, who got the royal family defamed for World War One, and I've told you already that Kaiser Bill was the head of the yeah, British Navy when they started King that. The the King Edward VII had Prince Eddie, who was an arsonist, so they faked his death in 1892, and he actually survived at least until 1933, living in Glam's Castle in Scotland, and they used that for extortion because the Queen Mother. Elizabeth, who was married to King George VI, she was from Glam's Castle, and the idea was that Prince Eddie would have the world's longest bed and breakfast, went on for at least 41 years, in exchange for one of them marrying the monarch, and that was the Queen Mother. The King Edward the Seventh died in, in five weeks after he murdered his older brother, Marcus and Well, and then King George V came onto the throne, and he was the younger brother of Prince Eddie, who and apparently died, but he was still alive, so that was a fake kinship. King George V was a fake kinship. And he married um, 
mirror of tape. This is fascinating. She's a black woman. <laughs> and I met today at church a fascinating woman from the Philippines. She's going to get me some of their currency. It's just amazing. Yet the whole world is on my case. And it's because I'm trying to release the whole world from this stranglehold. Yet murderous people, they will murder their relatives to keep the power, power base. And when they stammer into the kingship, that is the beginning of all of those global conflicts. And I've shown you the videos of that stammering king making perfectly lucid speeches at the Empire Exhibition in Glasgow in Ibrox two years before the big joke. Yeah, the w w w w Windsors, just to let them know that it's us. <laughs> Stammered on the W. Okay, there's Mary at Tech. She has to use loads of makeup to look like a white woman. <laughs> and that's King George V, who's a fake because Prince Eddie is still alive and well as an arsonist up in Glam's castle and all of those women missing their bits yeah, in the Jack the Ripper story covered up by the British Freemasonic police as they are obligated to do because of the linkage between the Freemasons in Kensington Palace and the vows that they make yeah, that they will no longer support the monarchies they are there now to disrupt them and that was led by the man who was the, on the ships, yeah, who, want, who made the command, your country needs you, and that is Lord, uh, it begins with a K, I can't remember his name, yeah, he was a, an efficient soldier, uh, Kitchener, okay? <laughs> All of it is told, and every one of these little stops could well be because they've edited out some of the statements that are being made there uh, it's absolutely vicious I'm outing it no matter what the risks fake King George V black Mary of Tech uh, it's stuck like and we've only got minutes left on the camera 20 minutes left on the camera and we can't even get the slider up now <laughs> yeah so everything stops when they begin to reveal that this is a murderous regime all through it all through it it is full of dirty tricks and genocide and all of those things that are on the front page of the papers because the queen's outfit that she wears is looked after by someone who's a goldsmith i think this is the joke yeah because they know this is coming at them and they have not paid their uh, commercial tax for keeping all of the jewels and chattels that she has to open the Houses of Parliament. They have not paid the corporation tax on that and that's because of all of the statements I make on the defrauding of our currency and the devaluation of our currency and all of the stuff that we talk... Here we go. Now we've lost the soundtrack. Uh, that's a neat trick isn't it? <laughs> So you've not seen me, now we can't get the slider up to get the soundtrack back. Yeah, it, everything for, th this is the whole of the world is now corrupted because of the intel and surveillance presence. Okay, so we've lost the soundtrack and we've lost the capacity to get the slider up. Uh, and we cannot get the other side to open. I'm going to have to try shutting that one down now so that we can get the other one to restore the soundtrack. So off you go. I'll keep calm. Uh, and we're just beyond Mary of Tech.
just means I'm going to have to make another video on it and waste everybody's time with all of the processing steps. Yeah, I don't think I will. I think you see the gravity of it already. Yeah, and all of that can covers, you know, almost all of the Windsor region. And the kings before that were the mad kings of George III of Green. Yeah, also out of Germany. And that's Britain's features, all three, all of that history of the developing of those massive weapons for the brutalisation of all countries. So where were we? We were up to. Okay, I think I'm going to have to stop. It's tragic what they're allowed to do. No one makes them accountable. And that's the role of the judiciary and the police. Yeah? No one will take it on. Despite the fact that these are physical cowards. Sorry, these are the people that are revealing the truths. Uh, but the people that interview them outside the parliament buildings and make the jokes about who their bosses are, yeah? They are the people that carry the huge automatic weapons. Told you in the uh, so that's Sunday, November twenty third. I think that is nineteen eighty three, and that's the killing of JFK. There's the car and <laughs> on Jim Fetzer's wall, and that crime has never been solved. Yeah, because all of it is ever so damn clever. Yeah, all of it involves tier after tier after tier of science. Rupert Murdoch in America, all of his children in Chipping Norton, and all of the other Quisling media leaders. The one who takes the sexual photos of Prince Harry is Berlusconi. He's a sex deviant himself. And all of them make news about themselves now, because that is the start of episode one of this story on report number five that there's no more news to release about the world and it's evil and so all of the news is released about the evil politicians that run it and that's the Levison report and all the inquests into that that gets them remunerated as well <laughs> and we have no capacity to play these things and to obtain a soundtrack even in my own room Faking as death.
faint as dead. Did, did he have some sort of medical training, Greg? Yeah, that was, it was actually Queen Victoria's doctor under Dr. the Gull. Of King Edward VII. What, accompanied him when he committed these crimes? Tell, tell me more about this. What, why were these women killed? They were witnesses to the wedding. Uh, oh, witnesses to the wedding. Now I recollect. Yes, yes. yes. And there was uh, proposals of extorting the royal family, which was in a fake royal family. So and the woman he married was lobotomized and kept in uh, isolation. So Queen Victoria was separated from her son for 16 years, just under 16 years. So yeah, she was in deep pain about being separated from her firstborn son. Queen Victoria had nine illegitimate children. The oldest son of those became King Edward VII. And he was bigamously born because the second marriage was, was bigamous. Uh, he was illegitimate and he was a Tuesday warlord. He was born on a Tuesday. And he organised World War I and World War II. And he also organised the assassination of Portuguese royal family on the 1st of February 1908 killed the king and his eldest son. This white face, instead of a white man in black face, these were black men in white face. Yeah, well they had sickle cell anemia so that kept the colour down. That was King George V, after that was King Edward VIII who was actually never crowned. He was a uh, bisexual version of homosexual who was married to Wallace Simpson who was uh, gender non-specific. So we've missed the Mary of Tech, but let's see. Where's she in her mouth about? Where's she in both mouths? Character. Because the second marriage was was bigamous. Echolac, yes, yes. And there was uh, proposals of extorting the raw fat. Because the second marriage was bigamous. Uh, he was illegitimate, and he was a few on Tuesday, and he organised him with the Portuguese royal family in London. We're um, they were black, uh, and we'll all make that to cover it up. They're so called mulattoes. So that's Mary of Tech. So the royal family were mulattoes for, for quite a while. It must have been a hell of a lot of makeup, Greg. Yeah. You could call this white face. Instead of a white man in black face, these were black men in white face. Yeah, well, they had sickle cell anemia, so that kept the colour down. That was King George V. After that was King Edward VIII, who was actually never crowned. He was a uh, bisexual version of homosexual who was married to Wallace Simpson, who was uh, gender non-specific. She had both male and female bits. So he abdicated the... Was she in her mouth or not? Uh, but she had both male and female sex organs. Undescended testing. So then uh, King mm -hmm. Edward VIII abdicated, and then we had uh, King George VI, who, who was actually retarded. Well, he was one IQ point above retarded, so he was 67 IQ. Stunning he king. A speech impediment, and he had really knocked knees. And he's supposedly the father of Queen Elizabeth II. But was he the subject of a film, The King's Speech? Yes, yes. Oh, shit. Sorry, folks. So it's all a stitch up, it's a massive joke. Yeah. Every Hollywood movie is a joke about the religious fraud, the lack of policing, yet yeah, everything. All the narcotics movies that I've ever made are a parody on the royals being the culprits. Yeah, and the presidential people, that's the FDR bloodlines. All of them are on the Pilgrim Fathers ships and all of them are directly related through the whole of the bloodlines to the Piso authors of the Bible, the Roman emperors and the pharaohs in Egypt and all the way back to uh, Alexander the Great and Lagos the Rabbit in Macedonia. And the Lagos the Rabbit joke is the Iago of Macedonia joke because that is the St. John in the Bible joke and that is John and that is the Santiago joke that is the football boots that I wore through all of my history in the rugby teams, yeah, with the three stripes. Yes, he was, he was. But it's, he wasn't actually a um, biological father before he became King George VI and the Queen Mother Elizabeth had a child that was a son that was epileptic and left to die on the gurney. So they decided to 
to not have King George VI do the breeding, and that was given to another. And that other person was an illegitimate son of King Edward VII called Winston Churchill. Called Winston Churchill of all names. So Winston Churchill was the biological natural father of Queen Elizabeth II and, and um, Princess Margaret, and that was actually done by artificial insemination, not by conception. And then Queen Elizabeth was actually born uh, above a pub. She was born above the coach and horses pub in Mayfair. So not as I don't think that appears in her official biography. <laughs> So she was, born, she was born above the pub, and the first person to look over her was a 17-year-old a um, a homosexual who became... Oh, shit. So this is the blunt dynasty that take the piss out of even Jeremy Clarkson, sing the songs about no bravery, are in the army that follow uh, not the blind Prince George of Cumbria, but the man who is Rory Stewart of Cumbria, yeah, that is this Rory Stewart that is Tony Blair's governor in Iraq. Yeah, and all of it is intimately intertwined with the brutalisation of the whole world. Okay, Anthony Blunt, 17, Queen Elizabeth's uncle, King George V's son, Pufta, murderous Pufta. Uh, the world's leading treasonous spy, Anthony Blunt. <laughs> So that was her uncle. And then King George VI went on to have a natural son born on Christmas 1927, which under the current rules. That hoo hoo bit makes me very nervous. Greg Hallett knows and understands all of the occult rules, all of the numbering codes, and all of the jokes about world history. And the hoo hoo, the reference to the owl, and all of the iconic occult missions that the owls in world history are purported to represent. Yeah, They're in the Arthurian stories and that gives me the impression that this pair may well be protection racketeers too, but only time will tell. <laughs> yeah, And it's far too complicated for any one person to suss out, unless that is the gods. Yeah, and I don't know whether or not they are one person either. I very much doubt it, actually. Uh, we've actually made him a king, and he lived in Rotorua in New Zealand, and it was actually King George VI's doctor, Baron Arthur Espy Porrot. I think he was Lord then, Lord Arthur Espy Porrot, who introduced me to him. So that was uh, a private audience for them when I was about five and three quarters. Five and three quarters years of age. Five and three quarters years of age, King George VI doctor introduced me to a King of England. Fascinating. Yeah, yeah, he lived in um, uh, Lewis, uh, uh, Lewis House, or next to Lewis House in Tudor Manor House at the corner of... King George VI's son lived here, third floor. King George the Sixth's Scion. Don't get that. Okay, we're wasting all of our time. But do you get the magnitude of how fraudulent the whole of world leadership is? And this is where the Rothschild Trust run all of those jokes about all of the money laundering and all of the stuff that I've told you about David Murray and his interests being registered there uh, and the people are telling me today that have fought in the armies yeah, and have returned from Iraq and their brothers are mercenary army tutors in Iraq. They're telling me about G4S being involved in the profiteering scandals in the Iraqi region and I told him all about the Afghanistani issues and his brother has served in Afghanistan and they put their lives at risk for cash. Yeah, the whole world is a for cash operation. None of it has integrity. And all of it is brutal and fear mongering. <laughs> and when you've got someone here to expose how all of the fear mongering is false news, they panic even more. Okay? It's a total waste of your time. 
and I've got five minutes left on the camera. I'll look at what's in the last bit and I'll put it in the descriptor for the video. All of that takes up all of my time and all the technology is available yet for these guys to use it to see so what they can do since Nuremberg is to translate every language into English or any other language yet yeah, and the computers that they had in Nuremberg were capable of that none of that is shared with the public now yeah and what happened was when Greg Hallett made an interview with someone was that the words when you play them into the computer are instantly transcribed into text <laughs> none of that is available to the ordinary working uh, intellectual who be get becomes interested in why every university across the globe is defrauded and yesterday on YouTube I started to make videos on all of the big universities like uh, <laughs> where Jim Fetzer went was Princeton yeah, and, and that one and Georgetown they are icons for Christianity as soon as Christianity hits the east coast of America yeah, and they get off the ships that is the launch of the Christian menace and all of the intellectuals in all of the universities Mar are now the Mar war mongers and, and as, as the entrance to the Polynesian pools and then the Polynesian well, pools was the well under what circumstances did he arrange to so introduce you um, my father selling insurance but it was a bit like selling coal to Newcastle you know because they're my six months insurance so why well, would you try and sell insurance to a legitimate royal <laughs> his name was um, George Fitzratimer. Fitzratimer. George Fitzratimer. Yeah. yeah. Great name. Yeah, and he was the son of King George VI and Guy Rangi. So he actually should have been the King of England because uh, he was the only natural son of uh, King George VI. Whereas Queen Elizabeth II and Princess Margaret weren't the children of King George VI. And do you see why New Zealand is in charge of all of the frauds involving the rule changes? And that is, as Greg Hallett tells you, the thin blue lines are drawn around New Zealand and all of the ocean and the islands offshore from New Zealand are officially, in legal terms, the New Zealand jurisdiction. All of the land mass that is New Zealand is not officially, it's not a land, it's not in any time zone and it's not in the place that they are responsible for and that's why they're allowed to get away with all of the scams and they're not allowed to interfere with the Japanese whaling ships because <laughs> that is that is offshore and it's yeah it's just twisted and that is in the earlier episodes I made on the Hallett Report number six and all of the ones on the war are now taken down and the ones that will have been put back up will be greatly curtailed <laughs> and all of the investigative journalists that cover up all of these frauds with trivia yeah and the missing planes was the archetypal event for that it showed me how dishonest all of Able Danger's reports are yeah because they proclaim that that was about missing planes and kidnaps of the people on board when it is actually me revealing what Greg Hallett had revealed a year or two before on the massive narcotics laundering exercises run by the royals yeah that is Philips light tubes for the cocaine that is the Dutch royals running the electricity company that make the Philips light tubes and the massive floods that they have when all of that news was released by the, for the first time by Greg and all of it occurred in the 1960s and that's when the massive Dutch floods occurred <laughs> and the Dutch saints are saints like Annihilation. Annihila is the one of the prominent Dutch saints. All of the religious frauds intertwine with all of these financial and narcotics deals and all of it is led by world leaders through all of biological time. We're not going to get the rest of the soundtrack I don't think. <laughs>
but do you see how it all works 